Hello, welcome back. I thought it would be fun to take a step back in time and reminisce on the good old days in the YouTube community. I don't know if I would say like good old days, but you know, back when things were exclusively on YouTube. And I thought this would be fun because I turned 30 a couple, a couple of weeks ago and I started making YouTube videos around the time I was 19 or 20 years old. So we've been doing this for a hot minute and I thought it would be fun to break down the differences in how I did my makeup in my 20s versus now going into my 30s. So the way I thought I would do this is just kind of like flash up on the screen some products that I used to use back in the day, some things that I just naturally reached for every single day and then show you what I'm currently using now. So primer to me was much more of like a big deal in my 20s. I had to have a primer no matter what I did. I always put on some type of normally pore filling, you know, the like old school silicone style formulas. And the two that I remember off the top of my head that I absolutely loved were Benefit Professional and the Bare Minerals Original like Primetime Primer. Nowadays, I rarely use a primer product or at least a product that is labeled for priming. Most of the time I use skincare items. So a good example is gonna be my M Beauty Project Face Glaze. Love this one. Right now I'm loving Merit Gray great skin uh, because I do have a lot of sensitive dry areas and I just find that this is a really nice refreshing product to wear not only underneath makeup but on top. I kind of like it on top more than I do underneath but right now it's working really well with my sensitive dry skin and so I just get one pump and I press it and you can see there's a nice glow coming from within and that's that's really all that I use for a uh, priming style product. And that's not to say that I think primers are useless. I just think that I wear makeup now that doesn't, I wear such minimal makeup that the longevity doesn't always matter to me. Like by the end of the day, I'm at home cooking dinner, watching my kid. You know, I don't necessarily care if it's held up in the best way possible, just as long as I've looked nice and fresh throughout the day. So that's kind of my reasoning. I'd rather just have a nice like healthy skincare product underneath. If there are times when I'm using like a fuller coverage foundation and I feel like I'm a little porous, um, I do have, I have one primer that I have at home that I use and it's the, the Rare Beauty one. I feel like it gives a nice smooth canvas. So um, let's move into foundation. Now, you know, there were so many full coverage foundations back in the day. I remember Tarte Amazonian Clay was a big hitter. That one was not a favorite of mine. I can remember not really loving that one. Uh, Bare Minerals Bare Pro, still no problems with that formula. I actually really like it. Do I reach for it often? Not really. I'm trying to think what else I used to use. NARS Sheer Glow was a big one for me, but I wouldn't really categorize that as like a fuller coverage style foundation. Um, actually still very much giving like clean girl aesthetic, no makeup makeup aesthetic. I still own that in my collection. Anyways, I think you know where I'm going with this. It is no longer about the full coverage. It is about light, glowy, skin tint, you know, light to medium coverage foundations. The one I'm using today, I actually have not tried yet, but just the description, seems like something that I would naturally reach for now. I'm only using this today because I want to test this. It's a new foundation launch and I know you all are gonna be interested. Um, and I want to test it throughout the week and give you a review towards the end of the week. So this is not one that I've tried. This will be my first time trying it and you'll kind of get a first impressions, but it is the new Say Beauty Glowy Super Skin foundation. So um, really excited about this. I'm kind of going in blind because this is a fresh launch. Like I just got this in today and I think it just released the day that I'm uh, filming this video. I was sent two colors, seven and eight. I actually think eight swatched a little bit more neutral on me. So I'm going to try it. It may be a little dark. I'm not sure. On the back of my hand, she looks a little dark. I guess we'll see. And they did come out with a brush. It's everyone's coming out with little short stubby guy here. Like Merit, love theirs. Pearl Beauty, love theirs. This little short, just multi-purpose buffing brush 
is very popular with a lot of uh, brands right now. And speaking of tools, like back in the day, I would use 20 different brushes to complete a full makeup look. I could literally do my whole freaking face with this brush now, even like my eye makeup. We're gonna throw some Laura Mercier <laughs> Coco on in a minute. I could probably do an entire look with this brush. So um, let's see how this goes. It's a little dark on me, but I think it'll be okay. Honestly, this would be the perfect shade for me in the summertime. Right now, you can see it is, it's a little dark on me. So, um, I might order a lighter shade and see if I can get it in in time just so I can make sure, you know, my review's accurate. But, it's not looking bad. As you can see, the glow is real with this. And I mean, hello, the name's Super Glowy foundation and I would imagine if you used the super glowy gel that say makes underneath it would be like 10 times as glowy so if you are not a glowy makeup person then this definitely will not be for you but I'm actually like looking at my skin right now and it looks nice I mean I don't have any complaints so this is kind of one pump on this side and then I did accidentally do a little bit through here I didn't mean to but um, kind of see the difference happening here we've got decent coverage I, I guess I wasn't expecting as much coverage with this but it's got a nice amount of coverage so yeah very glowy right now I will say because it is a tad dark on me it's hard for me to judge um but it's not obnoxiously glowy so um yeah I think I'm gonna see if I can grab a lighter shade to more accurately uh, review this for you but this is something that I would typically reach for it does seem like something I would typically reach for something that's fresh glowing not too overwhelming um you know I used to wear foundations that would absolutely cover every single freckle on my face and that's not the name of the game anymore I am thrilled that I packed a lighter concealer. This is number seven, Lift and Illuminate. And I used to love Tarte Shape Tape back in the day. I still own Tarte Shape Tape. I actually like their new creamy version a little bit better. Um, I might go a little heavy on this concealer just so I can, you know, even out the, the color tone a bit. But um, yeah, Tarte Shape Tape was a big one. I was never a huge fan of um, the NARS Radiant Creamy, like I liked it on other people, but not really on myself. Um, but it's one that I remember I would still like use every now and then. Too Faced. Didn't Too Faced have one born this way? I think I used Too Faced born this way. Um, I know I love the Too Faced born this way foundation. And that was one that I really went hard for for a long time. I used to remember like, okay, I don't know if this is just me, but... Uh, let's say you're going like out to eat or you're going to like an event or a, a you know big city and you know you want to do your makeup really nice. I just remember always doing my makeup with all of those like full coverage products and then getting in the car and like checking my makeup like while I'm going down the road and being like hmm why don't I like this like she looks good on camera you know further away you look flawless but close up why am I not why am I, why is this not working for me? And for some reason it took me a long time to figure out, yeah, you know, like five layers of full coverage foundation, <laughs> full coverage concealer, full coverage powder, blush bronzer, it's not working for you, sis. So, um, you know, it took me a while to figure that out, but here we are, amazing grace, hallelujah. So for me back in the day, I loved a good contour palette. I know everyone, if you have been wearing makeup for at least, 10 years now you had to have had the anastasia beverly hills contour palette uh with you know the banana powder the pink powder and then like the three contour shades everyone had that in their lineup um i remember i had several from tarte tarte had several uh powder contour bronzer palettes i don't know if you guys remember what happened to the brand motives they used to be really big 
on Instagram and I remember I used their stuff too. Um, you know what I'm gonna say now. It is all about the cream blush, the cream bronzer. So I just picked up the Say Beauty Sun Melt because I wanted to see how it performed with the new foundation. But this is very much a formula that I love and use now. I also love the NARS Cream Bronzer, Charlotte Tilbury, the Milani Supercharge. That's a new one from the drugstore I'm really loving. I'm probably gonna go pretty light-handed with this because <laughs> we're already we're already a little dark, but um, you know, I'll add we'll add a little bit to the cheeks. We'll define the cheeks a little bit. Now this is not really a super um, cool tone shade, but we'll add a little bit of definition right here. I just remember sculpting my face to the high heavens, like, you know, the bright, just like banana powder underneath the eye, heavy concealer. We really did do the most around here. Y'all, if this oxidizes on me, do not, do not make fun of me. Just know I'm very aware that this is a little dark. Um, I also did not intentionally mean to grab so many Say Beauty products, but here we go. I think you saw my last one. This is the um, powder I'm keeping at my office currently, and I really do like it. It's Say Beauty Air Set. Um, nothing's really changed with powders, at least drastically. Like I'm not using obviously like color correcting powders. Let's be real. Don't really need uh, color correcting powders. I, I don't have a ton of darkness um, on my under eye area. I really just struggle with redness sometimes. So I will go in with like a green um, primer or like a green color corrector, like cream color corrector. Uh, so yeah, powders, I still very much use like translucent powders back in the day. So I feel like nothing's drastically changed from that. I will say, I'm liking this foundation a little bit better now that I'm setting it with a powder. And I can just tell by the texture of the foundation, it probably will like pop through the powder. So if I look a little matte right now, I feel like give it probably like a good 30 minutes and this is gonna be like shining through. This is one of the new Merit Flush Balms and it's in the shade Stockholm. It's just a nice, soft pink tone. And we loved a good Tarte Amazonian Clay Powder Blush back in the day. We loved a good MAC Powder Blush. I mean, cream blush who back then? That's what I'm saying because I swear I did not own a cream blush until I don't know, what year do you guys think cream blushes really started to pop off? Because I feel like I did not own a cream blush until like 2017. Um, but yeah, was very much a loyalist to, um, let's say MAC Harmony was a big one, MAC Warm Soul, uh, the Tarte Amazonian Clay Blushes. I pretty much owned like every single one of those. We are cream loyalists around here. I actually went to look into <laughs> my powder blush door before I left just to see what I had and I literally... I have the Persona powder blushes. I really like those. And then I still had a couple of loose bare mineral blushes and that was pretty much it. So um, also moving into highlighter, I don't really wear highlighter often. Like that's enough, that's enough highlighter for me. I brought one to use, but I just, I don't always reach for highlighter on the reg, especially when I'm doing something like this where I already have enough glow coming from within. But let's talk about highlighters back in the day because they were everything. Um, Becca, RIP, rest Becca Soul. Not a brand anymore, but we all had Becca Opal popping off in our collection. The Becca uh, Jaclyn Hill, Champagne Pop. That was the end all be all. Like if you had those, you were it. MAC Mineralize Skin Finish. And I can't remember what it was called. What was the popular one called? Soft and Gentle. Everyone had Soft and Gentle. I love Soft and Gentle. Like it was in my collection forever. Um, so yeah, those were two that I just glazed my face in daily. Let's talk about eyebrows. Obviously I am doing the very least with eyebrows. Like the quicker the product, the better for me. 
Obviously, I've been raving about the Gen C tinted brow gels for like a couple of months now. I go for anything that's just quick, gives my brows a little bit of a fill in, but not too overwhelming. And that was quite the opposite back in the day. Um, so I know I had a moment with Anastasia's dip brow. I think everyone had a moment with that when the trend was, you know, super thick, precise, filled in eyebrows. Dip brow was like, it was your girl. You know, you had to reach for that to have precision and just like the it girl brow look for that time period. Uh, also Anastasia Brow Wiz. I don't think I have anything <laughs> from them anymore. I will say that I feel like fairly quickly I jumped off the thick brow trend. It did take me, it took me a moment, but when I discovered Glossier Boy Brow, like it changed my life. So I will say when I discovered that, I realized, hey, like, your brows really don't need that much. You know, you're doing a little bit too much um, and it's showing, unfortunately. So let's take it back a step. And then I remember finding boy brow and I don't know, I kind of uh, set me on to, you know, my journey of a more natural brow. But yeah, I definitely, I think for the photo that I'm gonna use for this thumbnail, you can very much see that I'm using a thick, heavy, dark pomade on my brows. You know what I feel like is also very different when it comes to like makeup culture on YouTube? I feel like there's a lot less drama now. Um, I don't, maybe I'm just like completely removed from that loop, but I feel like a lot of it's just on TikTok now. And I don't know if that's because it's like a younger generation thing. Um, um, or maybe I just don't tend to follow, I guess, people that are in, in that situation. But man, I just remember back in the day, my recommended for absolutely no reason was just always whatever, like the big gurus were, were fighting about. Anyways, you know what I'm about to say. We're going to pull out the big gun here. Laura Mercier Coco. So I haven't used Coco or I wasn't using Coco for a while just because, I don't know, I felt like I was just so loyal to it, it's all that I use. And so I tucked it away so I could start using some other things. And I'm not joking, I've not really like religiously used Coco in probably like nine months, close to a year. I mean, I use it, but not religiously. And so um, I pulled it back out the other day because I specifically wanted it for something. And I was like, why did I ever put this away? Like, why? Why has this been hidden? Because I don't know, it's just on me. I feel like it is my trusted, like no fuss guarantee flawless eye product. Like I know I'm always gonna like the end result with it. Um, it's very reliable, it matches everything. And um, yeah, basically I was like, why did I put this away? So, you know, for like the past, I would say, what do you guys think? For the past probably six years, I have been repping cream shadow sticks and nothing's really changed. Like I don't see anything changing because they're just so easy for me. Um, Coco is obviously my ride or die like already. I don't know about you all, but multiple colors just overwhelm me. I'm in my overwhelm phase <laughs> where I just want something simple that works and that's good and you know, it's like very minimal and Coco is it for me. Um, she's coming back out. She's gonna come back out to play. So if you see her in new videos, up and coming videos, you know why. I have yet to get a sunny day in my office. It is still raining and very much cloudy, but I'm not complaining because the lighting is still pretty good. Um, also, what did I say about this foundation? Look at it. It's like, I think I powdered like three times and look at it. She's coming through. I also feel like in my 20s, I really tried to change my eye shape with my eyeshadow. I would always try to, you know, do like the cut crease and like what was popular and it just was not it for my particular eye shape. So once I decided to stop working against 
my natural eye shape, I feel like things got a little bit better. Okay, we're getting there. So uh, in my 20s, every single day I wore eyelashes, almost every single day. Partially because I did work at a bare mineral store and so, you know, our makeup was supposed to look nice and just eyelashes were the thing. And honestly, I could put on eyelashes quicker than I could do my own mascara. Really, I'm not blaming myself there because it was easier for me, but now I'm like, I don't know how I did that every single day. Um, not only now do I just wear mascara, but I really love a good brown mascara. This is the L'Oreal Brown Balm Voluminous. It's a really good one. You should be able to just pick it up at most drugstores, but I love a good natural brown mascara. Um, and I can't tell you the last time I wore eyelashes and I'm being dead serious. Our Dell Demi Wispies were of course my go-to. Um, I also loved, I was trying to look this up the other night because I did love these lashes from um, the Sephora collection. If you all remember the ones that I used to use from the Sephora collection, I feel like they were called Fringe um, because I found some on Sephora that were called Fringe and it just like rung a bell, but I feel like there was another set from the Sephora collection that I used to maybe hipster like I don't know why hipster and fringe is um, sounding really familiar but those were yeah I, I absolutely love those I even wore those a lot I remember after I got married I can just remember specific parts of my life where those lashes were key so for lips in my 20s I loved a good liquid lipstick matte liquid lipstick just like everyone did um full lip liner full lipstick and i still wore gloss like i was still a glossy girl but i would layer so much on my lips now the way i like to do my lips is actually just line with a dark lip liner like a darker or slightly darker and i like to leave the center of my lips bare and then i just put like a nice sheer gloss over it that's nine times out of ten when you see me in my tutorials that's how i'm gonna do it and that's how i do my makeup daily so um i have patrick ta precision lip crayon this is in she strong it's more of a brown and then my m beauty project lip glaze and cookie i love the m beauty project lip glazes that's a perfect example of what i will wear for a daily um lip combo and when i say combo i i mean combo like i don't really put um, a lipstick on with it. Normally it's just a lip liner with a gloss. Be the queen of MAC lipsticks. I own like every single MAC lipstick because I got a MAC Pro discount for being an artist. Um, and yeah, I owned every single MAC lipstick, lip gloss, lip liner, you name it. I was a MAC lip girly. Still love MAC lip products. They're iconic for a reason. They have some great shade selections. So yeah, I love a good strong lip liner and then just something nice and sheer, like nude or pink in the middle. Okay, so here we are. Um, yeah, I think this is a pretty accurate representation of a daily or even like a spiced up look for me. You know, I'm very minimal now. I'm very much about uh, the fresher the look, the better. Uh, because unfortunately, when you get older and you start to notice more pores in the skin or fine lines, the more pigment and the more things you stack on top of it, the more it's just gonna get caught in those. So finding versatile products that have really flexible textures that look nice and fresh and healthy, um, or really it's like, it's my goal. It's my goal as of now, just being my thirties. I know I'm a newbie. Um, but yeah, I just thought it would be fun to analyze, uh, you know, some trends and products that were popular in my twenties and compared to how I'm doing my makeup now and see which products, um, uh, I'm using. So I hope you enjoyed this. I know this was like a fairly classic look of mine. Like I, this is a classic look. This is literally what I wear every single day. And a lot of these products are products I wear every single day. Uh, keep an eye out for the Say Beauty, uh, review if you guys want to see that definitely let me know below unless it's just something you don't want to see i 
kind of want the review of that to be my slightly shorter video this week. Um, and yeah, this will be my first day testing it, but hopefully you'll be interested because it it's, I don't know. I just, I love drops from Say Beauty. I think a lot of their products are things that I enjoy and you all enjoy as well. And this just seemed like a really um, fun foundation drop. So, so far so good. And honestly, the color, I mean, we worked it out. It's still a little dark, but we worked it out. Let me know what some of your favorite products were in your 20s or whatever decade you go back and remember the most about, you know, how you did your makeup. Because I know a lot of you leave comments and say like, oh, I could be your grandma, I could be your mom. So, you know, your 30s, your 40s, 50s, whatever. Let me know what some things, especially if now looking back, you think that they were uh, a little crazy. Would love to know. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see y'all in my next one. Bye.